Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. For Ham Radio Answers number 174, I want to give you an interim report on what's becoming a hot button issue in amateur radio as we get closer to the end of 2018. The FCC suddenly is warning everyone that Chinese branded radios, mostly UHF slash VHF handhelds, are illegal to use on amateur radio. Now, China is very much in the news these days with issues regarding tariffs, trade wars, and even defense. The FCC recently released this public notice that doesn't mention China directly, but China seems to be the only target. Given that the FCC regulates amateur radio in the United States, is something we have to pay attention to. You know, it's hard to find information about ham radio inside China itself. There's an article at awrl.org slash news slash CQ China about 10 years old now. The article states that the most internal Chinese activity is two meters or 70 centimeters. Well, there are Chinese domestic manufacturers now, which is a new development since the AWRL article. I searched the internet and found activity by hams in China, such as discussion boards and the Chinese Radio Amateurs Club, whose web page is shown here. And the Chinese radio equipment manufacturers are becoming a big force in Western amateur radio equipment sales, particularly UHF, VHF handhelds, and you see a variety around me here. I've reviewed all of these. Now, these radios have always provoked controversy. When they are FCC certified at all, they are certified to part 90. The common interpretation, until now, is that when a radio is certified to be compliant with part 90 requirements, but transmits only on ham frequencies, it's good enough for use by amateurs. This QST sidebar in 2010 accompanies the review of an early Oshing import into the United States like this handheld here. It was certified under part 90 and then Oshing made a class one permissive change, meaning that it modified its part 90 radio in such a way that it operated only on ham frequencies without changing any of the other technical information in the Part 90 certification. This was deemed by the ARRL chief counsel as adequate to make the radio legal in the U.S. for amateur use. Let's look at a sample certification for Chinese radio, in this case about Fang. The certification lab is in Germany in this case, though there are now authorized certification labs in China. You'll note that this radio is certified against part 90 and as it stands can transmit outside the ham bands. Let's look at what being certified on part 90 means. Part 90 is defined as quote, public land mobile radio services, for example, radio location devices, paging devices, commercial radio service, public safety radios such as police and fire. It also goes on to say, quote, this part states the conditions under which radio communications systems may be licensed and used in the public safety, industrial slash business radio pool and radio location radio services. These rules do not govern the licensing of radio systems belonging to and operated by the United States. Now, that last phrase, by the way, means radios operated by the United States federal government. No mention in Part 90 appears of using a Part 90 certified device on amateur radio frequencies, except not to cause interference to them. Let's look at the Part 90 transmit receive capabilities versus ham bands using that Baofeng as an example. The chart shows the radio's capabilities versus the two meter and 70 centimeter ham bands. It's easily seen that the Part 90 radios can transmit outside the ham bands. All 
the Chinese radios that are certified at all are certified to Part 90 standards. So far, the only Part 90 radio that I've been able to find that transmits only inside the ham bands is the Oshang radio like this one. While reviewing Chinese radios from Baofeng, Radiotity, TYT, Islands, and Redivus, I've said many times that ham radios ought to transmit only on ham bands. Again, note that if a radio transmits on ham bands only, which is part 97, then no certification is needed unless it scans. All of these do, of course. And then the scanning part needs special treatment. Now, here's where the mess comes in. The FCC issued a public notice on the 24th of September, 2018, called Enforcement Advisory Number 2018-03, also numbered DA 18-980. It's labeled in big red, white, and blue typeface here, FCC Enforcement Advisory. The title doesn't sound so strong. Quote, two-way VHF slash UHF radios may not be imported, advertised, or sold in the United States unless they comply with the commission's rules. With a subtitle that operators must also comply with FCC rules. Their concern appears to be driven by the sheer number of these non-compliant radios now in the United States, estimating the number at over a million, and that these radios are being improperly used in such a way as to interfere with legitimate communications activities, particularly public service communications. At first glance, this seems benign, but it gets complicated on further reading. Quote, if a device is capable of operating only, note the only, on frequencies that the FCC has allocated for use by amateur service licensees, it does not require FCC equipment authorization and an amateur licensee may use his or her license to operate such radios. Ham license is required, of course. Now this can get muddy. For example, devices can be certified to be FCC compliant with Part 90. Can these therefore be used by a licensed radio amateur on amateur bands? Well, that's the $64,000 question. The public notice says no. These radios must be authorized by the FCC prior to being operated in the United States. In other words, it appears the FCC is saying that amateurs can only operate commercially available equipment that is limited to transmitting inside the ham bands. This eliminates the vast majority of Chinese radios, whether Part 90 certified or not. <laughs> Whoops, there went all our Baofengs, Radiotides, Redivices, Islances, TYTs, and so forth. Note. In the eyes of the law, a federal government regulatory agency is presumed competent unless proven otherwise, which is a high standard of proof. This means if the FCC sticks by their current public notice, a huge pile of amateur VHF and UHF equipment just became unusable. I've seen reaction on YouTube from a variety of political and practical viewpoints. I would say that the issue is still very much in play. The FCC enforcement advisory is current and is, in a real sense, the law of the land. But law begets lawyers, and lawyers all interpret the law slightly differently. I would say that this enforcement advisory needs work, and the right people from the ARRL are getting involved with an aim to clarifying that hams can use Part 90 approved radios on ham radio frequencies. After all, there is an enormous number of these radios already imported into the United States, and together the Chinese radios have not only greatly lowered the cost of entry for tech class licensees, but also have greatly popularized the DMR digital voice mode. I've reviewed quite a few Chinese handhelds, as you can see here, and have found over the past few years that their radios have improved in value and user-friendliness. 
I will offer my opinion for what it is worth, which may be nothing. I think hams who currently own Part 90 approved radios should, my opinion only, should continue to be able to use them. I also think that going forward, Chinese radios destined for the U.S. amateur radio market should only be able to transmit on ham radio frequencies, a position I've held since I began reviewing these radios. Perhaps a compromise could be radios approved to Part 90 standards as far as emissions quality is concerned, but limited to ham radio frequencies going forward. Obviously, mine is just a single opinion and is certainly not a legal opinion. It's just an opinion, plain and unvarnished. In the meantime, stay tuned and stay calm. Something better will come out of the confusion. Let's follow the ARRL lead and give our National Amateur Radio Organization our support and our ideas. As I said, this is an interim report. I suspect this video will generate many comments. I look forward to reading them, but I will remove ad hominem or otherwise offensive comments. This is a viewer-supported channel. Thanks to all of you who dropped something in the tip jar or become a patron via patreon.com. And thanks to those who use my special Amazon links to purchase equipment on Amazon at the normal price in such a way that I get a bit of a finder's fee. You guys are great, and I love you all. Until we next meet, 73.